Okay, so let's talk about how you go about finding limits at positive and negative infinity for rational functions. So first of all, um, limits at positive and negative infinity still satisfy all the usual limit laws, provided everything is finite. So remember, the limit law said that if two limits exist, which means that they're finite, um, then you can you know, add the functions in the limit of the sum, so sum of limits, and so on. Um, so as long as limits at infinity are finite, you know, exist and are finite, all the limit laws still work. Like the limit as x goes to infinity of a constant is still a constant, and so on. Um, the one thing that you need to be careful about is, you know, be very careful thinking about infinity. Um, you should not be doing algebra with infinity. Um, so, like, be careful. Infinity, negative infinity is an indeterminate form, and infinity divided by infinity is an indeterminate form. That these things may or may not converge, and you can't assign, you don't know what number, if any, they converge to. You can um, deal with some simple things. Like if you have a function that's diverging to infinity, you add a finite function. Infinity plus a finite thing is still infinity, um, so that's not a problem. But avoid thing diverging minus thing diverging because those might cancel and they might not. And infinity over infinity, uh, likewise, it's a, a race and it sort of depends on which one's running faster towards infinity. Um, two things that we take for granted is um, there's a fact that if r is a positive power. The limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x to the r. So if r is a positive power, x to the r is going to diverge to infinity. So 1 over x to the r is 1 divided by a large positive number. Um, and so this is going to go to 0. And as long as everything makes sense, like you're not taking square roots of negative numbers, the same thing works as x goes to negative infinity. a half, this is the function 1 over x to the 1 half, or 1 over the square root of x. This only makes sense for positive values of x. But as long as you're avoiding sort of obvious domain problems, you can go in both directions and use this. And this is sort of our fundamental tool for finding limits of rational functions. The process for finding limits of rational functions is there's a, a trick that you use. want to multiply by 1 in a fancy way by multiplying and dividing by 1 over the highest power of x. So you divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x that's in the denominator. And then you can use the limit laws, which you can apply, and this fact that 1 over x and 1 over x squared and 1 over x cubed are going to go to 0 as x goes to positive or negative infinity. 
So we'll do a couple examples. So like the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the seventh minus seventy thousand divided by x to the sixth plus six hundred x to the fifth. What the uh, trick says to do is the highest power of x in the denominator is x to the sixth. And so what I can do is multiply by one in this weird way, where I multiply the numerator and denominator by one over x to the sixth. So I'm dividing the numerator and the denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator, which is six. And again, x is getting larger and larger and larger, so x is not zero, so this is fine. And when you do this, what you get is x to the seventh divided by x to the sixth, which is just x, and then you get minus 70,000 over x to the sixth. And then down here, x to the sixth times one over x to the sixth is one, and then you get 600 over, well, x to the fifth divided by x to the sixth, which is uh, one over x. And now we can use the limit laws, that this part is going to zero, and this part's going to zero, because dividing by powers, uh, positive powers of x will um, go to zero as x goes to infinity. And so all that really matters is this part. And as x goes to infinity, x is going to go to infinity. And dividing by one plus a little bit is not going to change that. This is going to diverge to positive infinity. And likewise, you can see what happens as x goes to negative infinity, that then we would get negative infinity end, because this part would be going to negative infinity, and dividing by 1 is not going to change the sign of that. So similarly, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this function. Thinking about the signs of what's going on here, this will go to negative infinity instead. And this is sort of what should happen whenever the power of x in the numerator is bigger, that it's going to outrun the denominator and this thing's going to blow up if the signs are positive or blow down towards negative infinity if the signs are negative. Another example. So let's take the limit as x goes to infinity first of 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 3x squared minus 3x minus 3. So we're going to use the same trick, that the highest power of x in the denominator is 2, so I should divide the numerator and the denominator by x squared, multiply this out. So 2x squared times 1 over x squared is 2. 2x times 1 over x squared is 2 over x. 1 times 1 over x squared is 1 over x squared. Here I get 3 minus 3 over x minus 3 over x squared. And now we can use the limit laws and see that each one of these goes to 0. And so what this is getting closer and closer to is 2 thirds. And the same argument works if x goes to negative infinity instead. And this is sort of what is going to happen whenever the powers of x are tied. If the highest power of x in the numerator matches the highest power of x in the denominator, they're sort of running towards infinity at the same rate. And because of this type of argument, all the lower terms don't really add anything. And so what you're going to get is the ratio of these leading coefficients. Then sort of one last one. limit as x goes to infinity of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. Again, what you want to do is divide by the highest power of x in the denominator, which is 2. So this is 1 over x squared. So x times 1 over x squared is 1 over x. Negative 1 times 1 over x squared is 1 over x squared. 
x squared times 1 over x squared is 1, and then minus 1 over 1 over x squared is minus 1 over x squared. And what I can see is this denominator is getting close to 1, and the numerator here is getting close to 0. So by the limit laws, the denominator is approaching a non-zero value, so the limit of the quotient is just the quotient of the limits. This is just 0 over 1, rather, which is 0. Um, and the same thing works as x goes to negative infinity. And this is sort of what you expect to happen any time the power of x in the denominator is bigger than the power of x in the numerator. That now your denominator is growing faster than the numerator, and so you're going to be sort of looking at something that's behaving like 1 over x or 1 over x squared in the limit. Um, and we know that those go to zero.